Hello there, and welcome. As I understand it, we are doing a functional integration session today, also called a lesson. Is that correct? Wonderful. So what do you know about functional integration? Okay. All right. Would you mind if I just tell you a little bit about its history and background before we get started? Wonderful. So functional integration is actually under the umbrella of the Feldenkrais method. There are two little offshoots of the method. We have awareness through movement, which is more like a group lesson or session, and then we have functional integration, which is the one-on-one -on -one sort of treatment. Now with functional integration, our aim is movement re-education. We're trying to reduce pain, we're trying to improve movement, we're trying to improve the mental state as well. It is a holistic sort of therapy. Now, the Feldenkrais method, functional integration, was founded by a man named Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. Now, this was developed as a result of observation and attempts to rehabilitate himself after an old injury had cropped up with new problems. So, because this was developed from his own sort of self-cultivation, we can't exactly be sure the year that he developed the thing, but it was around the mid-1900s, so 1940s, 1950s, and he did a lot of teaching from the 60s until his death in the 80s. So, on the outside, the Feldenkrais method looks like exercise, looks like sort of a guided exercise with the functional integration, but that's not what it is. It is movement re-education. So if you want to begin, we are just going to have you start sitting here, and we're going to do a little assessment, if that's okay. Okay. So, what I'm going to have you do is it's going to be very simple. Much of this appointment is going to be very simple. I am just going to have you turn to one side, okay, and give me a couple of those. Give me a couple of turns to one side, just like that. and see what parts of your body work with it, what parts stay static, what parts look tense, and if you could turn a few times to the other side. Just a few turns, as best as you can. Okay. All right, so there are certainly some holding patterns we can work with. So I want to get you situated on the table, and I'm going to put a bolster underneath your knees so that you are arranged more like you would be as you're standing but we're not working against the force of gravity, all right? So from this point onwards, I will need to be touching you. Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to do that? Wonderful, thank you. And how is that bolster underneath your knees? Is that comfortable? Okay. 
good. So I am going to start by doing some assessment before we do some of our movement re-education. And that's going to be kind of how this whole lesson goes, is that I'm going to assess, tweak, assess, tweak, sort of that pattern. And I'm going to begin by assessing your legs. I'm going to give them a bit of a tug, and we're going to see how your body responds to that movement. So I'm going to move down here, and we're just going to take one leg and I'm going to support it. And we're just going to move back and forth here. And I want to look at how the rest of your body moves, how it's organized. Right, and then the other side. Just moving back and forth very gentle, and I can see that a lot of the body does move as we're kind of jostling you here, but there are some places that look pretty tense. So I'm going to come back and we're going to begin with the upper part of the body for our little tweaking. I am going to come in and we're going to lift the shoulders and again just see how the body responds to that. Ideally when we lift the shoulder, the entire head moves to the opposite side. It will stay static. Okay, so I'm going to work primarily on this side. We're going to do a lot of work here, and then we'll move to the other side. And I want to begin by putting my hand underneath the shoulder. I'm going to put the opposite hand right on the clavicle here, and we're going to work by integrating these structures. So I'm going to lift the shoulder, and with the other hand, I'm going to move the opposite clavicle laterally. So we are making this sort of movement. We're trying to get your whole body to work in this way. So if I lift and push, lift and push. So essentially what we're doing is we're breaking down the mechanics of a movement, a specific movement. Breaking it into pieces. And using those bite-sized pieces, we teach the body where it needs to go. And then we can put it all together in the end. Good. And then I'm going to work with lifting the shoulder and moving the sternum laterally towards the opposite side. Now, what Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais worked with, a lot of his principles, his thought with the method, echo what we call today neuroplasticity. And this is something 
that actually is rather recent. It has not been the dominant thought for how the brain works and learns for very long. But the concept is that the brain is always learning and generally, unless there's some sort of dysfunction, always retains the ability to learn and can form new neural pathways. It can learn different ways to move, different ways to think, different ways to communicate. I'm going to be lifting the arm and putting this on your head here and we're going to work to turn the opposite way just very gently getting the arm involved so yeah, it was quite an interesting concept that decades before this became more mainstream that this sort of concept was thought of by Dr. Feldenkrais. And we're going to bring the arm to the opposite shoulder and we're going to lift and turn that way. I've got your elbow here. And Dr. Feldenkrais was a very interesting individual. His life was really almost too big for words. He was born in what is now Ukraine. He was Ukrainian-Israeli. And he had a very colorful past in terms of interests in terms of occupation. So I'm going to bring up your arm and we're going to put the forearm instead on your forehead here and we're going to turn towards the side while I guide your elbow. Dr. Feldenkrais was a physicist he worked on cartography, he worked on anti-submarine weaponry, he studied different self-defense sort of schools, including jujitsu. He met the founder of judo and studied judo, ended up founding a club that's one of the oldest in, in France. But I'm just going to be rolling your head towards the opposite side. He also worked as a research assistant to Frédéric Jolie Curie, as in like Madame Curie, as in his wife Irene Curie, radioactive, you know, sort of thing. And then I'm going to lift the shoulder while turning the head and get the head involved in the movement of turning. Really a very interesting person, a physicist, an engineer, and that was long before he even had started teaching the Feldenkrais method. And then let's reassess, and then we'll work with the shoulders a bit. Okay. Let's check the shoulders and see how much more movement we 
have got going on. Okay, so there's a lot more movement connecting everything together. So I think we're going to switch to the other side now. I'll come in with my hand under the shoulder and pressing the clavicle laterally as I lift. So, Feldenkrais method is also called somatic education because we're using the body, its sensations, its movements, and being really attentive to the details, to the most minute differences and variances in order to improve the posture, improve a painful joint or limb, to increase mobility. And when we do these things, we are able to allow the student, which is what our patients are called, allow the student to not only feel better, but to think better as well. So, I'm going to take your hand here, and put it on the forehead, and then we can turn. Feldenkrais is a lot of different things. It can't just be considered a bodywork or a an exercise, though sometimes it is diluted to a couple of terms. The arm to the opposite shoulder and work with that. Turn. 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 I had listened to something interesting regarding Feldenkrais that humans are born prematurely in that in a very short period of time, other animals are able to do the same sort of movements that their adult counterparts can, that they're born with the functionality built in. I'm going to take your forearm, press that to your head before we turn. And humans have to learn. And we're influenced by how other people sit, stand, walk. And it's not exactly built in. It takes several months, a long time, before we are able to sit up, stand, walk. I'm going to roll your head here just a few times. Moving together. So there's not exactly a manual on how we're supposed to move correctly. And if we don't move correctly, we either adapt or we get pain. Something might get goofy or we may never know. 
So that's where we can bring Feldenkrais in to figure out ways to move a little better, to move in ways that work more with your anatomy. I'm gonna take your arm and bring it up and give it a few tugs back and forth. Good. Okay, and then we're going to roll the head. Let's look at the shoulders. Good. It's just interesting how the principles of engineering were applied to this sort of modality. And how much thought went into the whole thing. So I'm going to come down to the legs and we are going to reassess how the whole body is working together and then I think we'll move on to the lower body. Just going to lift the leg and support while we just check the body's tension and movement. Good, and the other side. Okay, so things look a lot looser, but we definitely have some work to do in the pelvis, the low back, and the low rib cage area. I'm gonna come underneath here and we're gonna start by rolling the pelvis here. So that's gonna be an important part of turning. We'll move to the lower back. We're just manually moving everything. And the rib cage. Good. And the other side. Often we find when we work on one side that the other one improves as well. It's almost like it starts to get the body starts to get the basics and can implement those changes, but then we finish it up by tweaking on the other side. The other side of the rib cage here. And then we will move to the legs where I am going to be making what I call a triangle here where the leg is going to be at an angle and I'm going to just pull you back and forth and we're going to look at how the body moves Okay, and then I'm going to pull the knee while I'm also lifting the lower back. Lifting at the same time. Okay. And then, while supporting the leg, I'm just going to be giving it a bit of rotation. 
a bit of tilting. And then we are going to do that on the other side. We'll do our triangle here. Interlace my fingers and do some movement here using the core of my body to bring you back and forth. And we're going to lift and pull at the same time. Lift at the low back, pull at the knee. Good. Tilt out, tilt in, tilt out. So from here, we are going to be working on more of the upper body, more specifically a little bit in the neck and head. So I'm going to be putting my hands at about C7, T1, and we're going to lift up. So, on you, you can actually feel this pretty easily, that marker there, because it's the first big bump on the back of your neck, that vertebra. And then I'm going to be moving your shoulders here, coming under, lifting, and assessing that movement. And then I'm going to be putting my thumbs more in the anterior part of the body. So we're going to, going to get into the start of the rib cage. And I'm going to be pressing downwards. Kind of like what we did with your legs, with your knees. And then I'm going to be pulling up on your head here. We're just going to check that movement. Good. And then we are just going to remove the bolster from underneath your legs here. going to bring you to sitting and I'm going to help you start. So I'm going to triangle your leg here. I'll have you do the other one. And then I'm just going to pull your arm and we're going to roll you off. And how was all of that? Do you feel like you are a little more integrated, I guess is the word? Does it feel like everything's working together a little bit better for you? Good, that is our aim. So before we get you off and running, I just want to have a quick reassessment of you. So if you could take a couple of turns for me to one side. 
just like we did in the beginning, just a couple of turns. Wind's quite fierce in that. Yes, snowstorms in April, huh? <laughs> and if you could turn to the other side, Mm hmm just a couple of times. Okay, I'm definitely seeing a lot of improvement there. And I'll ask for one more sort of assessment. If I could get you to stand, and if I could see you turn a couple of times, just like we did. Okay, good. All right, so your very final assignment, I suppose, is if you could just take a few steps around the room and that will integrate everything that we have worked with, everything that I've taught your body and helped you with, your body's going to put that all together as you're walking, right? So, in terms of moving forward, it's really up to you. So, this sort of work works best when we're using both the awareness through movement and functional integration, but it's up to you on how you want to continue. Should you go through more functional integration lessons, then we would have you do different kinds of movement and try to give you some better ways to move with those. For example, perhaps with bending forward or just depending on what you're having issues with. All right? Okay. So how does that feel now that you've taken a turn about the room? Very good. Excellent. So that's all I have for you. Is there anything else I can do for you? Very good. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. I think besides craniosacral therapy, Feldenkrais has been something that I've gotten requests for for years, as long as I've been doing all of these different pseudoscience videos, and it was something that felt a little too large to tackle. There is both a lot of information on it and very little. A lot of it goes with the assumption that you're already practicing the Feldenkrais method, so it feels very technical, and you get these little snippets of videos or articles where we're using all these terms that, you know, to a layperson, it's not going to really mean much. There's a lot of talk about somatic education, neuromuscular education, or neural organization. And a lot of these are big terms that kind of just mean that the Feldenkrais method breaks down movement to try to get the body to work more efficiently and more effectively for the person. The body adores efficiency and efficacy. And in addition to that, the thought is if you move better and you're able to work better, you are able to think better, which there's certainly some validity in that. And while the Feldenkrais method is a pseudoscience, it is a very interesting way to approach that sort of topic, especially with it coming very close to the more modern idea of neuroplasticity, which hasn't been the dominant thought for very long, that we can change the neural pathways and make new neural pathways in our brain, and we have the capacity to do that 
over the course of our life. We're not just, you know, losing all our brain cells after 25 or whatever. So a lot of my research came from the actual Feldenkrais website and quite a bit from practitioners on YouTube that post their routines, but a lot of it, again, is just snippets. It's really hard to break down. It's why it's taken me so long to get into this topic. Just, it's a lot of words <laughs> that sometimes don't mean much and sometimes mean too much, but either way, I'm really glad that I got to break this down and make this video for you because I do believe that it, I really enjoyed filming it. I really enjoyed doing the practice. I wish it lasted longer, but that's just kind of how it is. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, it would greatly help me out if you clicked the like button and left a comment so YouTube's algorithm registers that it was a good video. If you want to see more of my work, consider subscribing to the channel. I create primarily medical, pseudoscience, slash alternative medicine, and personal attention ASMR role plays. But I've done a little bit of everything from historical to sci-fi to fantasy. If you'd like to support the channel, I offer ad-free videos, early access on videos, and exclusive content on Patreon. Or I also have a Ko-Fi link for a one-time donation or a thrown wish list for props and equipment. Thank you again, and I hope you have a whale of a